Welcome back to Ever Deepin. My name is Dylan and we're gonna check a plasma cutter. Special thanks to Dylan for introducing the video. And yes, today we're gonna be checking out a plasma cutter. Now, Best Arc reached out to me and wanted me to test out their BTC uh, 500 DP Series 7, which, as far as I know, isn't actually even available yet. Um, so I said, sure, go ahead, let me see what you got. And uh, the box finally showed up. So I haven't even opened this yet, so let's kind of, let's go through them. The unboxing was way faster than I expected. So here is the BTC 500 DP Series 7. Now this is a 110, 220, Plasma cutter. Um, I'm still kind of pulling it out of the box. It looks like we got an airline, the main body, obviously. Um, got the grounding clamp. Looks like we have a um, 110 to 220 adapter. And we got the torch, some, uh, some consumables, and some Teflon tape and the instructions so let me kind of dig into this and uh we'll see uh we'll see what i come up with all right first impressions okay like lightweight very compact i do like this feature here you can adjust the air pressure right off the face of uh the unit here and the one thing that's different than this uh on this than my previous video is that this one comes with a pilot arc um so you don't need to you know contact the the you know, the sheet of metal that you're cutting uh, to start it up. The ground clamp feels pretty stout. It feels like it could take some abuse. Um, it's got the copper, it's got the copper uh, bridge for both sides. Feels pretty good. And then the handle, um, you know, I'd probably give it like a six or seven out of 10. It feels fairly well made. Um, I never really do like this uh, protected thing, but since it's a pilot arc, it probably has to have that. Um, one thing I do like is that it has the guide on it to keep you from uh, touching the nozzle to the piece of metal. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Let's go around the back of the machine. Okay, so we have a water separator air built in, so I don't even need to supply my own um, my own nozzle this time. Uh, or my own quick disconnect because that's what it looks like it has. Um, they also send in a um, you know clear air hose if you uh, want to just kind of uh, you know connect it that way. But I'm going to just use direct air. And the on/off switch is in the back fan. So yeah, I mean this is even more compact than my Cut 50 in terms of length. I think like like width. This one's a little wider. So now that the compressor is all set up, I got the unit plugged in. One thing I do want to check, uh, want to kind of bring up uh, beforehand. This is, I do like this feature. Now, I can plug, this is, looks like it's a hardwired 220 machine. Um, I like that better. And then using the adapter to go to, th um, to 110. Uh, instead of the other way around, going from um, like a 110 plug to a 220 adapter because th this looks like it's mainly more set up for a 220 machine or 220 service, which is uh, where you're going to get your best cutting from, at least um, historically with other machines that I've used. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what we're looking at here. All right. Ooh, I like this. Okay, so right now we're set at 65 psi, 15 amps. Let's see how far this goes up. It'll probably be 50 because this is a 50 amp machine. Yep. Okay, and we can go down. This is this is kind of nice. All right. So we have cut, air test. So right now I'm running 50 57 psi. Nice. And I'm set it up to cut. This is 2t and 4t. The 2T is um, pull the trigger, hold the trigger, and pull. 4T is pull the trigger, let go of the trigger, then pull, then pull the trigger again to shut it off. That's pretty nice. And what is this? Uh, PTPA. Let me go check the directions and find out what this is. I'll be right back. So I was semi right. The P, the PT is post air time and PA is uh, pilot arc time. 
So that you can set how long you want your pilot arc to last. You can set how long your um, post um, air time lasts. I like keep kicking mine. Um, let's see, go to 15 seconds or 10 seconds. Is it 10? 15. I'll do eight because I like keeping the nozzles cool. And then the post, uh, the pilot arc. So I've never used a pilot arc machine, so this will be a first. Um, let's just double check my air. Let's. Nice. This is so cool. All right. And I believe the operating air temperature or the air PSI for this, I saw it somewhere. Where did I see it? 20 uh, for the 220 service, it's 30 to 60. And for the 110, it's 20 to 40. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this machine and uh, we'll put it through its paces. I'm gonna grab a couple different, uh, you know, thicknesses of metal, a couple different gauges, and we'll see how she cuts. All right, so I have my smorgasbord of cutting material. So across the top here, this is all steel. We got 14 gauge, eighth, 10 gauge, 3 16 and quarter. Uh, here I got aluminum, I got eighth inch aluminum and quarter inch aluminum, and then the real torture test. I got 3 8 steel, and if, if the machine makes it through this, we can go ahead and try three quarter. Uh, I just happen to have some kicking around, so we can go ahead and try that. But what we'll do is we're going to, we'll start the machine on 110 and work our way up to 220. All right, and to switch it from 110 to, or from 220 to 110, you take the hardwired plug, take the adapter, put it together, and that's it. So let's go ahead, plug it into some 110, fire it on. And I'm probably, based on this machine, it'll probably tell me that it's 110. Okay. This probably won't go up to, yep, I was just going to say. On 110, it's the, it maxes out at 35 amps, which is just about right. And I need to lower the air. Oh, oh sorry. Let's lower the air a little bit to... I think they said working pressure was 20 to 40. Let's go to 30 and see what happens. PSI is set to 30 PSI. We're on 110 power. I'm going to try to run through the different gauges of metal and we'll see what we come up with. Okay, not bad. I think I can do a little bit better. Try 30 amps. See what happens there. Oh, wow. Tell them I grounded it, right? There we go, a little bit better. Might be because of the guard. I'm not getting good, I'm not getting good cuts at the very end. Although that last cut was much better. Whew. So if you look, the last cut was a little bit better than the previous. I think really I just gotta dial this machine in. So let me do a couple more cuts, get it dialed in, and I'll be right back. Alright, so I did a bunch of cuts, and it looks like for me the one I like the most is about 30, about 30 PSI, 30 amp on 110 for, what is it, 16 gauge, 14 gauge. So let's do a quick cut based on the speed I like to run. cut all the way through there. This has very little cleanup. The cut is pretty good. I think, I, for me, it's just dialing it in. This could benefit from a quick shot with a flap disc, but for the most part, it's pretty clean. Um, I think it's just me dialing it in, but it cuts really, really smooth. So let's go up to the next gauge. We'll do uh, one eighth. Oh, 
All right. Based on my speed, I gotta probably turn up, turn it up a little bit, and I'm maxed out. Let's try this before I start messing with the air pressure. All right, much wider cut. Still in all the way through. Let's mess with the air. All right, now I'm at 35 psi. I'll try that again. Pretty clean cut. Very little left over. Let's try 16. Okay. All right, so that was the 3 16 cut. Uh, could have been better a lot left over and once again like I'm not this is my first time using the machine I'm probably like 10 minutes into using the machine getting um, getting all the the fine-tune adjustments dialed in it takes a little bit of time it takes a little bit of um, you know messing around but we're just seeing if the sucker will cut and how clean it will cut out of the box so let's move up to I think we're at we could go to the, uh, we'll go to quarter. And now, I'm still on 110. I'm maxed out, I'm gonna max out everything. Cause I think I'm getting to the edge of what a 110 machine will do. So, we're at 35 amps. Let's get the air. Set to 40. And let's give her a go. And it did it. Quarter inch on 110. Let's try aluminum. See what happens here. Nice. Good clean cut. Aluminum cuts weird, it kind of like flakes off. So that was a clean cut, very, very easy. Let's try quarter. Okay, not sure if that caught it or not, but I started cutting quarter inch aluminum and I was going slow. I ended up blowing a breaker on uh, the outlet. Um, and I was also not able to get all the way through. Uh, so 110 quarter inch aluminum, not gonna happen. And I was going slow. This one I went fast and it only cut through in a very, very small spot. The rest of it basically just go, uh, gouged the metal. So that's kind of where we are with aluminum. All right, so now we know where the limit is there. I did do quarter. Let's mess around. See if it'll do eighth steel, or I'm sorry, three eighths steel. Yeah, not gonna happen. Three eighths is just a little bit big on 110 machine. And I started shooting schmegma all over. I actually burned my hand. Granted, I should be wearing gloves. You know, safety first, right? All right, so I think we kind of see where this is with the 110. Um, it's sweet spot for 110 would probably be thinner stuff. You know, 3 16 if you wanna do like a rugged cut, 10 gauge. Eighth and sheet metal uh, at 110 would be probably pretty good on this machine. So let's go ahead and kick it up to 220 and see what she can really do. All right, so we are over onto 220. I am at 15 amps. I believe I am at 30 psi. So let's start low and work our way up and see what we can do. This is good. We're going to start off with the 14 gauge.
Okay, on its lowest setting, it did cut through, albeit not very well. So yeah, let's bump it up to 20 amps, see what happens. Ooh, much better cut. Much better cut, pretty clean, um, pretty clean uh, exit, just a little bit of leftover. I like it. I'll move up to eight and see what she can do. I didn't like that. Let me do that again. Probably needs a little bit more. All right, I went up five PSI, five amps. Let's try that again. Oh, very nice cut. Very nice cut. A little bit left over, more, a little bit left over. More than I would have liked, but still, I can work with that. That's good. Next, we'll do 10 gauge. No problem. No problem at all. All right. Okay, got a different piece of 316, so let's give this a shot. Alright, going up. 5 PSI. 5 amps, let's give it a shot. that cut? Barely. Alright, I'm going up to 40 amps. I can't tell if that cut or not. I think it did. Yeah, cut. I, I'm obviously being jagged and not being really smooth with it, but yeah, the cut. All right. Let's try, what do we, what do we got left here? We got quarter. Got quarter. Let's see what happens here. Wow, I do not like this car. All right, I'm gonna try this freehand because this guard is actually starting to make me upset here.
46 amps, let's try this. That's actually a pretty thin cut. Yep, quarter inch. Let's move up to the big boy stuff. Three eighths. Creates relatively cleanly and relatively straight, considering that I was free for the most part just kind of bouncing around. Huh. You know what? Let's do one more on uh, three eighths. I'm gonna freehand it. Try to be as smooth as I can be. All right, so now that we're on 220, let's go ahead and test the aluminum at uh, 1 eighth and uh, 1 quarter. Here's one eighth. All right. Super easy. Sun quarter. Interesting. I think I figured something out. I think I'm. I almost want to open it up. Alright, let's try that again. Alright, so far so good. Now the machine seems to be doing pretty well. I would need some more time to kind of fine tune everything. But let's really torture test it. This is three quarter. Um, I, it's, not right, it's not advertised to be able to cut this. But let's see what happens. You know, let's just throw it up, you know, throw it to the wolves and see what happens. All right, now in an effort to kind of save the machine and not send freaking stuff all over my shop, it got three quarters of the way through, which is roughly just a little about three eighths. So not bad. I didn't expect it to uh, be able to do three, uh, uh, three quarters. So uh, let me kind of clean up, collect my thoughts. I'll be right back. So plasma cutters are great, but you do got to wonder that, I mean, that material that cutting goes somewhere, and if you look, it's kind of hard to see, but you see a lot of aluminum. The steel kind of burns off and kind of turns to black, so it's a little harder to see, but the aluminum freaking goes everywhere. You can see it right down there, all over there. So the cleanup's kind of a pain. All right, so now that the shop's clean, let me just give you a quick rundown of what I like about this machine and some things that I'm kind of unsure about. Now, overall, I absolutely love the setup here. Everything you need to do in control is within the six by six box. Your amps, your PSI, you can go into your air calibration, as well as your cutting style and post arc and um, uh, post air and pilot arc uh, timer for that. 
Um, along the lines of the po the pilot arc, I'm I've never had a machine that had it, so this is kind of new to me. I didn't notice anything majorly like mind blowing from a non pilot arc machine. Although I believe having the pilot arc means you can start anywhere in the piece; you don't have to be on an edge. Um, because I know on my other machines, w which are non pilot arc, if you start in the middle of the piece, which you can do, the arc kind of does a random cut to blow through um and it could potentially screw up your piece this i believe the pilot arc goes straight down and it should do what it needs to do um if i'm wrong definitely let me know um but i think these would be really good for people who have plasma tables with the pilot arc feature but yeah it's very simple very small very compact lightweight built fairly well um I mean, it's not built any better or any worse than any machine that I've seen in the last, I don't know, five years. Uh, I like that the air separator is built in. In fact, i got to empty it. There's a bunch of air, uh, a bunch of water in there. <laughs> and uh, it came with the air fitting already, so it is literally nearly plug and play. As long as you have a compressor, you're good to go. Another thing that I really like is that it's built for 220 and the adapter takes it down to 110 as opposed to the other way around where the machine is built for 110 and you adapt up to 220. Um, Cause I have 220, it, it's, this is a better, probably better, better fit for me. And as you saw through the test, it cuts everything all the way up to three eighths, up three eighths on 220, and I believe quarter to 110. So if you wanted to take this to your buddy's house, need to cut some body panels or something, and all they have is 110, it'll work. Um, but for a DIY hobbyist such as myself, who's doing stuff with quarter inch and up to maybe three eighths, this, this covers all the bases. So thank you for watching. Uh, I want to send a big shout out to ArcBest for sending me the machine to test so I can show you guys what it's capable of. And with that being said, we'll catch you on the next one.